Hey, Pete, if you could just give us your idea, how do you feel like this week of practice is going? Have you been pleased with it? It was. I think it was a professional practice throughout. Obviously, okay, we played pro football, but just it was clean. Um, the attention to details was there. The focus is there. The mindset was there. The intent was there. Things that we asked for throughout the week was there. Uh, real clean. Please, where we're at as of today. Is it is it a fundamental type thing? Is it feel for this week of practice, like you say, get back to just the fundamental training camp. Yeah. It's training camp, man. Back to square one. Technique, fundamentals, pad level, hand placement, eyes in the right place, tackling is, is going to be at a premium, and you're going to need a lot of guys to tackle. And I think on, a, on the other side of the ball, you know, getting off, double teams, staying together, staying connected, and taking care of the football. You mentioned the tackling. How do you work on that? Is it live, more live tackling or more? No, you can't go live at this point. You know, what I mean, a lot of bags. I mean, it's more just. It's getting yourself in a football position, right? You know, being square. Not, not too many times are you in a perfect football position, but being in the best position you can and then using the right shoulder, right foot, you know what I mean? And more importantly, grab cloth. You see it around the NFL, everybody's punching at the ball and there's more missed tackles. Not just us, everybody. But, you know, stop punching the ball and tackle. Coach, uh, obviously every week is physical in the NFL, but do you expect this to be one of the most physical games on the schedule? No, Baltimore is physical, so I, I have to tell you that on Monday. But we expect it. That's, that's the style of football they play. Uh, that's the style of football we want to represent as well. Um, so when you look at the team, you know, they got off to a fast start. And then, okay, what did they get back to when you know, you've had two losses? Probably get back to what they, who they are, and that's being a physical team. I was wondering if you had any updates on uh, Jackson Powers, Johnson, and Jacoby. Yeah, they'll practice today. They'll practice today. You had a couple other starters get back to practice this week that have missed the last couple of games there, Mumford and Devon Diablo. Do you have confidence they'll be able to get back on the field? Yeah, it seems so. I think both are trending in that direction. What did you guys miss with Diablo? Not out there? What, what, what did you uh, see that wasn't there? I mean, he's a four-year start. I mean, you know, his fourth year starting and playing, and he's getting better. He's been getting better each and every week. And then you're throwing out younger players, you know, Luke Madison at first and then Tommy. But obviously, you get somebody that you know spills. They're they're comfortable with one another. I said that back in training camp. When you when you have continuity and playing, and you got a feeling for you know your guy next to you, your fellow linebacker, that makes it a lot easier. Then, and then also he takes a little bit off a of spill, right? Just from a vocal standpoint, a mental standpoint, you don't have to worry about telling him what to do like you would do with a rookie. So I think all that helps. And like I said, Diablo, we're excited to get him back. He's healthy, running around. Excited to see him play. What do you uh, want and maybe need to see from from uh, uh, Aiden O'Connell this week as a starter? Just, you know, good, good quarterback play. First and foremost, take care of the football. Take care of the football. No turnovers. No turnovers. No turnovers. No turnovers. Tommy Eichenberg was telling me in the locker room yesterday or the day before, I don't remember which, but he, obviously your personalities are different, but you play the same in how he appreciates his quarterback coach, appreciates his Patrick, but your input to him carries a lot of weight. Do you talk about your relationship with him, please? Yeah, I think – being biased with all the linebackers, I find my way to get to them throughout the week. If it's in a building, it might be on the field, it might be in the cafeteria, and just talk one life, and then more importantly, football and just linebacker play. I always say, you know, it's got to look right, it's got to sound right, you got to talk right. And I think for a lot of players, as they get in the league, they think they know it all. And you know, not to say that Mike Caldwell's not doing his job, um, and he's doing an excellent job. But I think just when you hear from your head coach, and obviously he played that position, I think it means a little bit more. But also, I want, understand, I want them to understand that I was in his position. I started as a rookie, played as a rookie. So there was times that you know, I felt lost or like, man, why is it not coming as easy? Why am I struggling in certain things? And just to make them to kind of put them at ease. Um, and that's with Tommy. But with all the backers, I've always tried to find something throughout the week that I can hit them on, even with spill. You know, I go to spill every game before the game and pregame warm-ups, and I tell me the baddest SOB on the field today. He needs to be the best linebacker on the field, and he's done that now for five games. Coach, what can you say to some of the intangibles about players like Jonah Laulu and Matthew Butler that may need to step into bigger roles at defensive <clears throat> tackle this week? Yeah, I think they both, uh, especially Jonah, he's got more and more reps each and every week. You'll see that again this week. We got some injuries there with Christian. Um, and I think Matthew Butler has done an outstanding job. He's on practice squad. He's been active uh, throughout his career here. And this is a great opportunity for him going forward to you know step up. Can't replace Christian Wilkins, right? But you can do yourself and be the best version of yourself, and that's all we're going to ask them to do. Just do their job. And what I ask them this week, just do right. Just do right. Don't go outside the box. Don't be somebody else. Don't try to make that game-winning play or that game-winning tackle. Just keep them linemen off our linebackers, get some knockback, and use your hands. I think Zemir White might have a chance to get back up. We'll see. He's practicing today. Coach, at some point, DJ Glaze is going to be facing uh, TJ Watt, obviously, on Sunday. How much has going against Max prepared him for that? Yin and yang right there, right? I mean, it's like, wow. Like, if you can have a better person to go against in each and every practice, and we always start off practice with competition. So, like today, Max is practicing, so he'll get some good reps there versus um, with Max. But 
you know, TJ is a is a very uh, very intriguing player when you watch him because he can drop. Doesn't play every snap like Max, but he's very effective. And for some reason, when the game's on the line on third down or in the red zone, man, you better know where 90 is. And hopefully we got enough hands and eyes on him at all times. They also have Cam Hayward coming to town. So how much of a challenge is this offensive line going to face on Sunday with those guys? Yeah, I mean, you're talking about one of the best probably of all time, you know, inside and just a consistent pro. I mean, he's a badass. I just remember two years ago him just pretty much you know, tearing our game apart. You know, we played up there in Pittsburgh, that, I think it was Christmas Day or so. Christmas Eve, but, um, you know, a really good player, physical. I mean, it starts with them. When he's in the game, it's pretty much it's difficult to run the ball, especially at him. <laughs> you got to find ways to, to get big boy moving there. But um, I think I got, our guys are for the challenge, right? We got two young guards there with you know, Dylan and and Jackson. And, and I know Jackson. I kind of got Jackson going a little bit. He wears that 5'8". I said, man, this is a good week for 5'8 to play really well. So that's good. Antonio, uh, as a guy that when you played, you were kind of known as a tackling machine anyway. So now in the next level as a coach, how frustrating is it for you to see the, the issues with tackling, not only here, but, but league-wide? Yeah, and I'm going to go back to it. I think we're working so much. Everybody talking about this punch, right? When I played, there was one guy, two guys that punched at the ball very well and still made tackles. T, uh, Peanut, T, uh, Tillman and then uh, Charles Woodson. But even in my career when I played, you was always taught to bite the ball, knock the ball off the, the, the receiver or the running back. And I thought we did, to be honest, I thought we did a good job going in training camp, really working on those fundamentals. Uh, but they started to creep up. Saw a little bit of it in preseason. Okay, preseason, we get in season, guys will get better. But it has been an issue for us. And, again, this week, that was the first two things we did in every period was tackling and ball security. Um, but at the end, they always say tackling is a one-two. Either you want to do it or you don't. You want to get dirty, you don't. You want to have the aches and pains, or you don't. And we just got to have that mindset that, you know, we know we need to take some Advil before and after the game, this one, because it's going to hurt. All right, appreciate it. You guys have a good